Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Oh. Hi there, World Wanderers and Natural Sciences students. Welcome to Mr. Lord Hunt's classroom. Today, we are going to be speaking about photosynthesis and respiration. In this model, we will focus on how green plants use their energy from the sun to make sugars, the requirements for photosynthesis, the process of respiration, the requirements for respiration to occur, an experiment to determine whether photosynthesis has occurred, and an experiment to determine whether respiration has occurred. Okay, so by the end of this module, you should be able to define photosynthesis, you should be able to define respiration, you should be able to, to go and conduct an experiment to test a leaf for the presence of starch and to conduct an experiment to determine whether light is necessary for photosynthesis. You should be able to conduct an experiment to determine whether living organisms give off carbon dioxide when they respire and write a chemical reaction for photosynthesis and respiration. Guys, so what is photosynthesis and respiration? Photosynthesis and respiration can be thought of as opposite processes. The products of one process are the exact reactants for the opposite process. In photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is required by the cells to produce food. In respiration, carbon dioxide is given off as a byproduct. In photosynthesis, oxygen is given off as a byproduct. In respiration, oxygen is used to produce energy. Right, so this is an example how plants use carbon dioxide to produce food by photosynthesis. Plants and animals use oxygen to produce energy by respiration. Right guys, this is a fairly simple example of an ecosystem. So interactions between organisms and between these organisms and their environment. So with regards to photosynthesis, interactions and interdependence in an ecosystem are driven by the need for energy to sustain life. The sun is the important source providing the energy in the form of heat and light. So capturing the sun's energy for living things to need to survive, they need energy to survive. And they get this energy from food. All animals depend on other animals for plants or for food. So plants do not depend on other living things for energy. Plants capture the sun's energy by the process of photosynthesis. This energy is then made available to other organisms in the ecosystem. So just like this figure um, of uh, an ecosystem, the organisms would not be able to survive without the sun's energy. And the grasses and the trees capture the sun's energy. The animals in the ecosystem obtain this energy in one of two ways, either directly by eating the plants or indirectly by eating the animals, which have eaten the plants. Okay, but that still does not tell us what photosynthesis is. So photosynthesis is the fact that all green plants contain structures called chloroplasts in their leaves and stems. The chloroplasts contain a green pigment called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is able to trap the radiant energy from the sun and convert it into a sugar called glucose. The glucose is then stored in the plant as starch. So in order to make the glucose, the plant also requires 1. Water, which is obtained from the soil, and 2. A gas called carbon dioxide, which it gets from the atmosphere. The gas that the plant gives off as a byproduct is called oxygen. Photosynthesis, then, is the process where a green plant uses radiant energy from the sun together with carbon dioxide and water in a series of chemical reactions to make glucose. And this can be simplified in this following chemical word equation. Okay guys, so with regards to our experiment, you will need a couple of safety procedures. But uh, I need to get them on, so let's get it on. Okay, so I've got my lab coat on. Always remember to 
button up your lab coat. Especially if you've got your ties on guys, you don't want that to get stuck in anything. Also, I want you guys to wear safety goggles whenever you're working with chemicals. So in this case, I'll be wearing this. But for you guys to hear me well, I'm going to take it off just for now. So some of the things that we're going to be using in our experiments is lime water, ethanol, just clean air that I'm going to be bubbling in, drippers, a beaker, iodine solution, a pipe, and a petri dish. Okay, so just remember to pay really good attention when I give you guys descriptions of terms and how these processes work. It is very important that you take notes in your notebooks. Right guys, so in our first experiment, we are going to test for starch. So how are we going to do that? Let me show you. Right guys, so with our first experiment, we need to investigate to prove that green leaves produce starch when they are exposed to sunlight. But before we do that, we need to prove that there's actually photosynthesis taking place. So in order to do this, it is important that the leaf has no starch present. So we first have to de-starch it. So within my cupboard here, I've got my geranium plant and I've been keeping it now for more than a day without any sunlight. So I'm gonna quickly pop it open so you guys can just have a quick peep at it. There it is. But we're gonna keep it away from light for a few more hours and then we're gonna do our first experiment. Okay guys, so to start off this experiment, we will need to do the following. We're gonna take the leaves that have been in the cupboard for at least two days. Mine was in the cupboard for about a day and a bit. And then we're gonna boil it for about five minutes. So let's come back after five minutes of boiling these leaves. As you guys can see, it's almost five minutes and the leaves have boiled now. And what I can see is some of the leaves have turned yellow. So really, really exciting. Let's wait another few seconds and then we're going to start with the second part of the process. And that's it. That's five minutes gone. Okay. So the second part of the process is, guys, we've been boiling it now for at least five minutes. And then with a pair of tongs or pliers, you can see here, I'm going to remove them and place them into the test tube. I'm just going to take this one first. Right. Shake it off a bit. Right. Placing it in the test tube. Then, I'm going to add the ethanol. As you can see here's the ethanol. And I'm going to make sure that the ethanol covers it completely. Covering it completely. And then into the beaker, I'm going to add some hot water. This is not boiling water, this is just hot water. All right. The chlorophyll from the leaf will dissolve in the alcohol. Now let's have a look and see if we can see that process happening. And we start seeing it dissolving in the alcohol. I see something happening. Okay, we'll leave that for a few seconds. Then we're going to remove the leaf from the ethanol and rinse the leaf in hot water to remove any axis. 
So I'm going to use the same beaker and then I'll just remove the leaf. Oop, dropped it. There we go. And put it in the water. You can see the ethanol has turned yellow in coloration. Then I'm going to take the leaf and put it onto the petri dish. Okay. I'm going to try and spread it out a little bit so you guys can see it well. That's a little bit tricky. I chose one of the smallest leaves. I should have chosen a bigger one. Anyway, then I've spread out the leaf onto the petri dish and I'm going to add with the dropper just one or two drops of iodine solution. Make sure guys you do not spill this on your clothing. And one, two. Okay, now that that is done, we'll leave it, see if there's going to be a reaction. Can you guys see it? Let me hold it a little bit closer. Okay, so taking a good look at this, there's absolutely no color change. It stays orange brown and not turning to your blue or black. Okay, so plants convert glucose into starch. The presence of the starch is proof that photosynthesis has occurred. Because we left this uh, geranium inside a cupboard for almost two days it meant that no photosynthesis could take place that means that the plant couldn't turn the glucose into starch so with iodine testing for the starch we now have confirmed that no photosynthesis, photosynthesis has taken place let's move on to the next part of the process Right guys, so now we're going to move on to the next part of our experiment. Now that we have determined that there is no starch present in the leaves of the plant, we will choose one of the leaves and cover a little bit with it with uh, this tin foil. Now, I've got some cloth blind pegs that I'm going to use and we're going to do that before we take it out into the sun. You can choose any of the leaves of the pot plant. Just cover a portion with it with tin foil and uh, make sure that you place it in the sun for at least five hours and then we'll detach it again and then we're going to boil it just like with the first part of the experiment right students so for the next part we're going to take the, the geranium that was now standing in the sun for around about five hours and we're going to cut these leaves off and i'm going to place it in the boiling water I'm going to make sure I also take off the tin foil and then I'll drop it in the boiling water for five minutes again. I've got a spare one here, just want to do the same with that one. Go and drop it in for five minutes. Okay, so let's come back in five minutes. Okay, guys, so the five minutes are up. I'm going to take it out and do exactly the same as what I did with the first part of the experiment. I'm just going to take the big one this time and right, shake it off a little bit. Okay, press it in. And I'll fast forward the rest of the process so you guys don't have to wait. Okay guys, so as you can see, it is turning completely black here on this side, but not on that side. So, our experiment is a success. We have determined that there, there is indeed starch in this side of the leaf. I hope you enjoyed it. 
Energy is released from food through the process of respiration. The series of chemical reactions by which plants and animals release the potential energy trapped in them is called respiration. The structures responsible for respiration are called mitochondria and are found in both plant and animal cells. Respiration breaks down energy-rich food substances such as sugar glucose using oxygen gas. The byproducts of this process are carbon dioxide and water. This can be represented by the following chemical word equation. When an animal breathes out or exhale, carbon dioxide is returned to the atmosphere. A common test in the natural science is the lime water test. So let me show you that. Right students, so for our last experiment, we are going to use the beaker and the air bubbler, some lime water and our straw or the, the pipe. So what we're going to do is, we're first going to fill the beaker, not full to the brim, just enough lime water. There we go. And I'm just going to put the cap on. I don't want to waste it. And then what we're going to do is, with the bubbler, this is going to be our first test to see if normal air has got carbon dioxide in it. So let's quickly put a few bubbles in there. As you can see, nothing is happening. It is actually staying completely clear. Can you guys see that? All right. Now, let's see what happens when I take this pipe and blow or exhale or respire into whoops let's see if we can just get the pipe in there see it's still quite clear just bring it a little bit closer to you guys so you can all see and now have a good look what's going to happen How awesome is that? Look how milky that water is now. So guys, obviously, as I exhale, I release CO2 into the atmosphere. And so does all of the other living creatures on this planet. Hope you guys enjoyed this. This was your last experiment. Right, wild wanderers and students, I hope you found today's video informative. I want you guys to answer the following questions of your textbooks. I want you guys to look at your textbooks and do the revision activity 1A, B, 2, 3, complete figure 4, this one over here, and do 5, 6A, 7, 7A and B. So please take your books that were handed out to you and do those revisions. Remember to write on today's date and write your name on your book so that I know who it is I'm marking. Alright guys, that's it for me for today. I'll see you guys next week with the next module. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.